Good evening, welcome to the Medfield School Committee meeting of Monday, June 8th. Uh, meeting to get to order. We just come out of an executive session to discuss a uh, collective bargaining issue. Uh, the agenda tonight is uh, reasonably full. We have approval of May 18th minutes. We're going to go over the uh, school improvement plans for Blake and Medfield High, a presentation on a new K 5 math uh, textbook, an update on the field study, accepting donations, and then Dr. Martin has report for the committee. Why don't we dive right in with minutes? Oh, we have the table notes. The motion is table minutes. So moved. Second. Second. In favor? Four is actually unanimous. They're gone. Swan. Good evening. Good evening. Good evening. Um, so I'm excited to present our school improvement plan. I do want to first uh, thank our site council and the entire staff for the collaborative effort in putting this all together, reviewing what we've accomplished this year and um, what we had set out to accomplish and maybe didn't accomplish, but then uh, looking into next year to lie ahead. Um, really under the, the few thematic pieces that we're really looking at is our student learning professional practice goals um, in regards to student work, um, standards-based reporting, which you know I talked about about a month or so ago here at school committee, um, our organizational systems, and really looking for, towards a portfolio approach to measure progress for students. Um, so kind of working through the themes, first theme under facilities, equipment, and technology, I'll do a recap and looking ahead to next year. Um, most significant piece from equipment and technology and facilities is really expanding our iPad initiative from the eighth grade um, experience that we had last calendar year into all three grades, um, which has gone very well. Definitely had some bumps along the way, which were, I think, natural and some predictable, some not. Um, messy process has gone very well. Um, we also, as a district, in an effective way, restructured alignment in the roles of our tech integration specialists, um, really expanding our work in our library. And then a, a big piece, too, with the technology was the transitioning to our new database of Aspen for the student informational system and Gmail, um, switching that as a district, which definitely had its um, our learning curve for all in the fall, and kind of working through some of that. Um, but, you know, I think we're in a really good place, and definitely for the better for it. Looking ahead to next year, we have some facility um, things that we're looking at really in our auditorium, which needs some TLC. Um, and we're looking at some ceiling work that's going to happen right over around the summer. Actually, uh, met with uh, Michael this morning a little bit, talk, kind of mapping out for our drama program, looking at enhancing that auditorium and really making it better. We're going to be painting the floors. Uh, doing a lot of work on the summer, which we're excited about. Also, revamping our sort of media innovation lab and looking at our computer lab to be much more. Um, suitable for media presentations and really looking at some of the technology that we've been using in a more productive manner. So we're looking at that. Um, again, working on our library and all, all of our facilities just to make sure that they're more updated to meet with the kids. Yeah. Could you yeah. touch upon the makerspace a little bit? Yeah, you bet. Um, and so the makerspace we've been, that was a coalition has been unbelievably supportive, um, as always, and along with the CSA. And looking at part of the component in our library um, is a makerspace, and it's, it's really an experiential learning center for kids. Um, and really, some of it is things that are as basic as playing with Legos um, and building, and having some tasks and orient, orienting kids with that. But also looking at circuit boards and technology, looking at our STEM work and for technology and engineering. So we got a bunch of uh, um, different tools that the kids can use for that. And actually, Owen O'Corp has been great about working with us. And we had a student focus group looking at what might work for it. So. That equipment's been coming in, and it'll be designed for kids to be using through typical classes, like the science classes, the math classes come on in, but also during advising and after school as well. Um, and the whole intent is really to get kids to experiment and, and to really, you know, in a way, play. Because I think that's something that's lost, and, and we're really looking at bringing that in, so we're really excited about that. Thank you, Beth. Um, looking at curriculum and assessment, Big thing that we're doing that I know as a district looking at is aligning our math and English with the Common Core. Um, we expanded our co-teaching models to all three grades in English and math, with, where we have um, dual certified special educators and uh, regular educators in English and math in all three grades to really service the students um, in a more appropriate and, a, and more really um, equitable model, which has been great. Um, continue our work with our homework study group to formalize exam and homework practices. Also, um, and this touches on a number of the themes, but our Anti-Defamation League World of Difference Leadership Program for this year, um, it was year one of it, and we're expanding into next year. It's been phenomenal to see the eighth grade and seventh grade leaders really work, and they've done a lot of work with our sixth and seventh graders. 
as well. Um, we also expanded um, <coughs> looking at, again, some of the technology pieces. We had an hour of coding endeavor for that included all students, which was really successful. That really helped spark our uh, student groups with the Technovation Challenge, um, which was really under the idea of girls and coding. Um, and we had two teams, and Marguerite Heim and Diane Horvath were phenomenal about helping lead these students forward. And they ended up being uh, named finalists, which was just an amazing um, accomplishment for them at the Microsoft Nerd Center, which is really cool. Um, one of the best things about it, again, this touched on a lot of things, was these girls were not a bunch of girls that you would have put together, necessarily. That they had very different interests and would not have necessarily connected um, naturally, uh, in a way, in very different circles. You just seen them come together for a common interest, six, seventh, and eighth graders. And they presented at our faculty meeting last week, and it was just great to see them have that experience. That they were finalists nationwide, right? Nationwide. Nationwide. Nice. Thank you. Awesome. Um, looking ahead to next year with that, um, some of them are working with portfolios, looking at that. Um, we are going to be piloting co-teaching in, in Spanish classes, which is something that um, we're really excited about because that's an area that I, I don't think our, some of our students have been given enough support um, in some of our world language classes. So we're looking at that. Um, I mean, enhancing our response to intervention protocol, and that couples with our work with our curriculum accommodation plan and our student support team as well. Um, so that, yeah, and in terms of homework and the homework group you have going up, uh, talk a little bit about that because we know it's not Mr. Blount wants to get rid of homework. It's not. It is sometimes not. I hear that. So just <laughs> yeah, well, and I hear that often too. I know. Um, <laughs> it's, it's really, you know, it started about uh, really, this is our second year of formally meeting, um, and homework's always a, a topic. And, <clears throat> I have felt as though we do give busy work, and I think we have to really look at that. And also, a lot of it has been with the integration of technology, too, kind of thinking about what do we want really kids to learn and exit school with, and how purposeful are our homework practices. So as a group of teachers that we've um, been meeting about bi-weekly, or every third week at the, at the longest stretch, and really started just talking about it. And we have a cross-section of teachers and <coughs> voluntary. Um, and we meet in the mornings talking about it. And really, this year we expanded more to do a lot more, blending that into our faculty meetings and our professional development work too. Talking about our, what are some practices that we're going to try and see what, what it looks like and, and how effective that is. So I think one goal is to reduce homework for sure, but but it's not to get rid of homework. I think there is purposeful and practical work. We got to make sure that's what it is. Um, some examples are, you know, for math, the kids don't necessarily need to do 35 problems of the same type of concept. If they can do six to eight and understand the concept, we're in good shape. And I think we just want to make sure that we're doing that and differentiating. Um, it does concern me anytime I hear that a sixth grader is spending you know, upwards of two hours plus a night on homework. That's, that's a lot of time after a long school day. And then I think that's that's a piece that, how productive is that time? And it, is it their time or is it their parents or tutors working with them on that work? And how valid is, is the information we're getting from that? So that's some of the things we're really looking at. Um, Looking into student life, um, our acceptance was our theme this year, um, which we tried to cross all sections. So we're <coughs> continuing. next year will be collaboration and try to make sort of a progression with our different themes that they do tie together from community to perseverance to creativity to acceptance and then into collaboration so that they're themes for our school. Um, we are hoping to really expand that work that we've done with our ADL team, our leadership team. Um, we're excited this year that the Martin Luther King Junior Day of Service was expanding the blood drive and really student-led blood drive. It was very well um, received and very well attended. So that, that was excellent. So we're hoping to do that, you know, and thinking about how can we broaden it outside of Blake too and do some things within the community, just the medical community as well, outside the walls of Blake. Um, we administered our student survey and parent survey that, that we do each year, really looking at that to kind of have a good pulse on where we're at. Um, Continue dialogue along those lines that Dr. Marshall just talked about with community related to student stress and homework. So I think that's something that we, you know, we're looking pre-K through 12 as a district about student stress and what does that mean? Can we really, beyond just talking about it, try some things and think about what that looks like? Um, you know, again, I'd like to highlight over the past couple of years, our participation at the Special Olympics um, has been great for our students. And, and really our peer um, students have been working with the kids in their adaptive phys ed class as well, attending at Halls and High this year. It was really fun to see. Um, which means great. Uh, looking ahead to next year, uh, we want to really do a good kind of reconcerted focus on our advisory program, which I think we have a very healthy advisory program right now. I think we have the sort of, sometimes talk about the proverbial good problems of what to do with advisory, because um, we have a lot of ideas going on with that. And I think sometimes, sometimes at late, I think, and I tend to sometimes have a hard time saying no to a good idea. Um, 
So we really, I think, need to focus that program and, and make sure that we're not doing, trying to jam too much into it. About, you know, I would say about eight years ago, maybe longer, we had a problem where I don't think all staff were on board with advisory. We don't have that problem now. I just think we have probably too many good things going on. So we have to make sure that we're not trying to do too much and watering down some of the programs. Um, student connectedness is always something that's very important. You know, we do a survey with kids each year to, to figure out, to get a sense of, is there an adult in the building that they would feel comfortable going to with a problem, either big or small? And it doesn't really matter to me who it is, but can we name that? And then taking a look at those kids who really don't have an adult, and what is that behind? And can we take a look at, are there some themes to look at? And an idea that came up from our site council was, is there a method that we can look into sort of capturing the involvement of all the kids at Blake? And sort of behind the scenes, just kind of get a sense, maybe some of those students just aren't involved. And, and, and is there, are there a way that we can mentor them and, and foster some more connections for kids? Because it's very clear that when you're feeling connected and re relational with kids, it's going to make a difference on their learning. So that's important to us. Um, so, you know, again, looking at the student anxiety is a piece, too, as well, that really couples with that student stress. Um, personnel and professional development, we had a number of teachers get their certification for the SEI retail class for sheltered English immersion for our ELL students. Administrators were part of that as well. Um, so that will be expanded into next year. Um, had a number of conferences and workshops that teachers went to. Um, Digital Learning Day, I, I thought this year went really well as a district. It has in the past. I like the fact that we broaden it um, to having neighboring communities come too, and I know we've been talking about it as a district to do that more, because I think we have a, both a lot to gain from others, but a lot to really teach others too. Um, and then, you know, the professional development too, the teacher evaluation, you know, we're in year two of this new system, and next year we're expanding to standards three and four as well on that, so that's a, a big part of our professional development and working along with that. Um, you know, the other piece that I think that we have talked about and working with Corey Jacome, our special ed coordinator, is doing some more professional development specifically on special ed processes um, for our staff and making sure that regular educators understand the processes behind it and how we can improve that. Um, I am excited that we're going to continue to be looking at the standards-based grading. The sixth grade science team is going to expand it into all, for all year next year. And then I've had some conversations with different content of trying what it might look like maybe in another grade as well. Not necessarily for a full term, but in some pockets so we get a better sense of what that looks like. And then we have some good time to really examine that. Um, you know, school management, uh, the fifth theme, um, really, you know, I've said in the past, really want to maintain the middle school model. Uh, we have declining enrollment coming up, so we're really going to do a real concerted effort starting this fall to get a, a cross group that really meets regularly looking at our master schedule. So I, I think we have to adapt, and we know that that's coming. We want to be ahead of it and, and to adapt for it. Um, We've also did, I think, which we can do better, and work with Matt LaCobre, increased professional development and training for our aides. I think sometimes they're, you know, forgotten. And we have to make sure that, that they're in line with what we're doing. Um, looking into next year, I also want to make sure we're reviewing our crisis response protocols. Um, want to also review and revise our formal and standardize our system for, for consult meetings for kids and for teachers. Um, and then communication, community outreach. Um, you know, this year we did a lot talking about student achievement and student <coughs> recognition and how we recognize kids and talking about is what we're using just a tradition that we've maintained forever, but is it still relevant and is it working? And really, the overarching piece is, is it in line with our mission statement? Think about our honor roll system. Um, you know, how are we recognizing students and are, are we casting a wide enough net to recognize kids? And we want to make sure that we're doing that in a thoughtful way. Um, it was great to have some Medfield High students come to a, a student panel and parent panel talk about their experience as well. And I think that was something that we started to do more on. I think we can just do more of having the high school kids talk to middle school kids about their experience because they're going to listen to them far better than us. Um, and it's real authentic to get a sense of that. So the more we can do that, it would be better. Um, continue our work with the veterans around Veterans Day recognition. Um, our guidance counselors, you know, this year, formalize the parent copies, and I think we can, you know, think about the model that the high school does with that, I think has been a good model, and Stephanie Worth has done a very nice job kind of helping to talk about what that might look like at the middle school as well. Um, we did, Kelly Romensky did a nice parent presentation on study skills. I think the more parent ed we do, the better um, engaging that, and we've done that with technology as well. Um, we also started to do some teacher and kids Skype with other schools. Um, we kind of established a partnership with Wellesley who has similar initiatives going on, having kids collaborate with one another, but also teachers too, to learn from one another. Um, and then thinking into next year, we are going to be, um, we just got the results from Metro West Adolescent Health Survey, so we'll be doing a forum for 
our staff, but also for parents as well. Um, think about piloting a, a sort of book study group with parents, um, you know, with any adults that would want to be on it from the community, but also, um, I'm sorry, adults on staff, but adults in the community that would like to look at that, kind of bridge some of the ideas that were together to increase that communication. With that homework study group, Jeff, one thing that came up um, was inviting some parents to that as well. And it's a real open discussion about some things. Um, some parents <coughs> expressed some interest too, so looking at that. Um, and I think the other thing under really communication outreach, which touched on student life, is really looking at our resource that we're providing for parents and the community through our website, through our guidance department, um, and our school psychologist for mental health resources, um, student parent workshops, stress relief, healthy relationships. I think we can do a better job of providing those resources and utilizing that outreach. Um, and then the, the final thing I just want to highlight is we just recently started talking about um, engaging some of the high school help desk students of what that might look like at the middle school. And, and for that kind of model, but also not just for us to have a help desk, but having those high school kids partner with some of the middle school kids. We are very fortunate to be on the same campus um, and, and to, to utilize that. Um, I think we'd be remiss not doing such. So we're looking at that. Um, so you know, Rob and I have talked about that and we're excited about looking at that as we move forward. Um, I just hate to miss the opportunity to thank our whole staff, you know, I'm biased about everyone. Um, and excited about just recognizing what we're doing. We're going to be taking a lot of time reflecting over the next couple of weeks about things that have gone well, things that haven't gone well, and setting some goals for next year. And also just want to once again thank the CSA and the Coalition for their amazing support. Um, we, 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 we're, we're able to do a lot of things that we wouldn't be able to, um, and it's been, it's been great. So I'm um, looking forward to the event. Any questions at all? Yes. I know I talk quickly. I am. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, <sorry. laughs> um, thank you, Nat. Sure. Yeah, we appreciate all that you do. Um, I have a question about student surveys. Yeah. Um, my children don't talk about that. Yep. And, um, but I'm just wondering if there are open-ended questions and are there big themes that come out of this that um, you're recognizing? Yeah, so, so the, the surveys that we give, um, and the site council's helped develop it, this is our fourth year of doing it, they're actually the, basically the exact same questions that are given to parents. Oh. But, so it's a, a mirroring of it. Yeah. So you know, it might say, um, how much time do you spend on homework? How much does your child spend on homework? So what's hard, to be very honest, to, to quantify though is, we don't get 100% response rate on parents. Yeah. So not necessarily the parents and, I mean, we get 100% rate on kids. So sometimes the data does align, sometimes it doesn't. But um, it, it's been very interesting looking at, I think kids definitely um, have said they feel supported at Blake, um, which, is, which is very positive. I think um, stress and anxiety definitely is there. You know, and that's definitely a, a big piece that we think thematically. Um, the, Connectedness piece is still there that I think um, overall it's very positive, but we still it may sit, say like, okay, 91% of the kids feel connected at the lake. That's a great number we look at, but when you think about 9% don't feel connected, that's about 55 kids. Yeah. And if we think about 55 students coming to school not feeling connected, that's worse. Um, and feeling like um, also the peer relation piece, I mean, again, most kids report that they feel very comfortable at lunch, they have a good place to sit, but you know, anywhere, any kid, you don't want to feel uncomfortable coming to school, but the percentages, even 5%, you know, they we're talking 25 kids that are coming to school every day, not feeling ready to learn, and not feeling safe. So that's something we want to really look at um, thoughtfully. Um, you know, I think that the, the, we get some positive feedback about the different offerings that we have. Um, I, I think there hasn't been anything overly surprising. I will say, um, this year we added more open-ended questions, which is a blessing and a curse, because some people just take the opportunity to give whatever feedback, even have nothing to do with that question. <laughs> and, um, you know, so I, you know, you have to kind of, but that's that's also information. You know, at least we know what's what's going on there, um, and, and some of that too is sort of encouraging. I think there's definitely always very hotly debated iPads in middle school, and that's a distraction. Um, and you know, I would be silly to say it's not. But I also firmly do believe, I'm an idealist, but I also think these are the good years to help teach that. And if we can help shape those good habits before habits are totally done, I think that's a piece too. And also it was a learning curve for us this year. We have, I mean, we met today as a sixth grade team and um, Diane Horvath talked about how can we better roll it out and, and make sure we're doing it in a thoughtful manner. So those are some themes. I think that's a hard thing for, for parents too. And I recognize that with my own children that 
it's a distraction, but I also say the iPad did not make middle school boys distracted. I mean, they have been distracted since. I mean, I mean, to, to be very, I mean, very honest, I mean, their binders were a total disaster mess beforehand. Yeah. So it's not the iPad. Do I think that it makes it a lot easier for them to be distracted? You bet. But I think sometimes kids are gaming in class. I do. I mean, I think but we have to just kind of work on that. Which leads to my follow-up question sure. about the one-to-one. Yep. Um, I've seen the benefits from it yeah. from my own children. But what are the teachers? What's the word on the street, especially from the eighth grade teachers who have now what had it two, three years, three years? All eighth grade have had it. Um, all of them this is their second year. Some of them this is their third year. Yes, if they were exactly. a pilot, yeah. um, poster. Um, I, I think they're thrilled by it. I mean, I, to be honest with you, I think what it comes down to is sometimes saying, well, what if we didn't have it next year? What would that look like? And it's kind of like I can't imagine not from a exciting piece of teaching and enhancement, but also, I mean, there's the productivity and efficiency aspect. It's been amazing, and the communication with kids, and I think also coupled with that, having their email accounts and, and looking at that, it's been amazingly efficient to see the collaboration on that. Do I think that, that we're still in the learning curve? Yeah, but I hope we always are in that learning curve to see what it looks like going forward. Um, I think sixth and seventh grade teachers, it was the deep end of the pool jumping in. I mean, it was a very messy start what that looked like. And there were some challenges that we had with transitioning to Gmail. Also transitioning to the student information system. That was messy and it, and it wasn't and it, to no one's fault, but that was a, a lot kind of taking in. And so we want to make sure that we're thoughtfully looking at it. Um, those surveys from parents and kids have been very helpful too, that they're seeing some progress. So back to those surveys, those yeah. anonymous surveys on the part of the kids. Yeah. Oh, so you can't target which kids are. Right, um, yeah, I mean, so, so that's what's, you know, because I think if we have the names, I don't think we're going to get the same kind of candor right. that we get. And that can be a hard piece from some parents, too, because parents, it's anonymous, too, mm -hmm. which I totally respect and value. But then sometimes some things are written, it's, you know, I just kind of hope that they would re reach out mm -hmm. and ask. So the student connection this survey is not anonymous, so that we really can get a sense of who the kids are. Oh, really? Uh, yeah. Can it, you it, try it, to reach out and yeah, so I think, you know, and what we did, too, this year, which I think was a good thing talking about, we didn't initially... Um, if kids did not put an adult or said they didn't feel connected, we did make outreach to parents to talk about. Mm -hmm. uh, because I think, you know, that can be sort of a hard conversation, but we also just want, as a parent, I'd want to know that. Mm -hmm. You know, absolutely, um, looking at that. And, and some, you know, in talking parents, it might make sense. They said, you know what, I'd go to my pastor, or I'd go to my this and that piece. But that doesn't still mean that we don't want someone at their, <coughs> at school to feel like they might feel, okay, but if something did happen, is there an adult that you might feel comfortable going to, mm -hmm. whoever it might be. And you know what, I think the yeah. teachers at Blake, at least in this first year that we've had um, at Blake, um, the iPad has been almost a great way to connect because they connect so much um, through technology yeah. that they can shoot out an email at 10 o'clock at night if something's bothered or yeah. an issue that they might not want to be seen in a hallway, you know, talking to a teacher or pulling a teacher aside because then five people are on them about, why, why did you just go up to her? Why did yeah. you say, what did, you know, what happened? So I think that has been probably one of the positive sides, a huge positive, to connect with um, teachers and, and people at Blake. Yeah, I, so I, think, nice. I mean, that's, that's a good point, you know, because I think that's because kids are just so vulnerable. I mean, that, yeah. I think all kids are vulnerable. Middle school can be more heightened yeah. with what's going on than the developmental. So. Mm -hmm. so I think, you know, the social media thing is, whether we have the iPads or not, right. those issues would be going on right. anyhow. And, and so we have to kind of look at that, too, and work with parents, too. I just had a couple of questions to ask. Sure. Um, on the homework, has there been a lot of talk about using a flip classroom to, to cut down on the? Yeah, the yeah. I mean, I, you know, and I know. experiment with that? Or? Yeah, they have. I think certain teachers have definitely been doing it more. Um, okay. You know, I know one that comes to mind, which I think you know, Aaron Carney uses yeah. it a, a good amount. Marisa uses it a lot. Math has been very helpful. Uh, Brenda Proffy's done a great deal. Nancy McLaughlin has. I've been looking at that. And I mean, it's a lot of work on that kind of upfront yeah. work, but it's been great because I think then when they come in, we get, we get a far better sense of how to use it. And that's productive time too. Um, I think you know a big piece with that homework, with that flipped classroom is also looking at making sure that that's real productive time. You know, and, But at the same time, we don't want to make it that they have to learn it on their own because it, it really shouldn't be for that. It's kind of practice, review, or extension of what that looks like. Uh, and then I, I personally want to thank you for a whole mess of things. This is the first year I've had two kids in the same school in their careers. Um, I'm happy every parent who sent a kid to DC. What a great trip. Thank you. 
we really appreciate you on that. I don't know how parents managed when their kids were away with it before Twitter. <laughs> but <laughs> it, I mean, it's just not only did a great job of kind of updating it, but it seemed to me from everybody I talked to, you knew your kid was going to be in the picture twice a day. You knew where they were, you knew what they were doing. Very comforting. Them. Pro probably it'd be better for everybody if we just cut the cord and didn't hear from them before they <laughs> But that's not who we are. So um, I, it was, we really appreciated that. And I think, you know, you've done a lot um, at Flake this year about parent meetings and trying to get parents in. I'm always embarrassed that I can't make them because I work in Boston, but uh, I think it's great. And I, you know, I don't know what the turnout has been, but I think as you continue to do that, there'll be much more culture of attending. Because, you know, whether it's training on Twitter or talking about, you know, changing assessments or how we recognize kids, you know, there, there's a whole gamut of opportunities for people to show up. And I think the more you do it, the more they will. And I know it's a lot on you and your staff, so I appreciate it. And last thing, as a former um, special ed teacher, we're sitting around the dinner table tonight, and the kids are talking about their friends. And it really struck me what an inclusive middle school you have for kids with disabilities. I, when I taught, it was elementary, and I always wondered where my kids would end up when they're in middle school. Um, but you know, whether it's at concerts or in the play or in the cafeteria or in the classroom, kids you know see their peers with disabilities as their classmates in a way that uh, never would happen 10 years ago. I don't think so. That's real testament to you and your your staff, and we really appreciate it. So. Thanks a lot. Thank you. Thanks, Doc. Thank you. Good evening. I'll take your theme from yesterday, Chris. You know, times have changed when the Microsoft Nerd Center sounds really cool. <laughs> 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 so, I'll learn more about that. Uh, well, first of all, uh, good evening. And um, uh, I first want to thank our site council uh, at the high school for their help in creating our improvement plan. Um, one of the little differences uh, between the middle school and the high school site council is that I get students involved. So I have uh, a couple students on. Um, uh, on the committee, and they're just fantastic. They're great resources. You really get to pick their brains and you know, kind of get a good understanding of what they're what they're hearing on the street. That's uh, what they tell us a lot. Um, but certainly, their fingerprints are all over this room as well. So I want to thank them especially. Um, so I'll highlight a few things. I'm looking at uh, some of what we are um, hoping to accomplish next year. Um, we'll start uh, in the theme one of facilities, equipment, and technology. Obviously, we've talked a lot and heard a lot about the field study. Uh, which it sounds like you'll hear a little bit more later. Uh, we're very excited about uh, what that uh, will hopefully look like soon. Um, we are, I believe, in going into year 10 in the fall, or 11, sorry, of our, our current field. So uh, we were one of the first schools in the area to have turf, um, and I believe, Michael, correct me if I'm wrong, other than Westwood, I'm um, sorry, other than um, Hopkinton, I believe every school in the tri right now has turf, and Hopkinton is my choice to have a very large campus in there to maintain a, a stadium with grass. But um, uh, obviously creating a facility for our student athletes is important. Uh, more so as Dr. Mars and I have been talking about creating a, a real centerpiece for our community as well. Um, whether bringing you know, the lacrosse kids or the soccer and perhaps even football. Um, so I'm really excited for what that entire project will encompass, including a new track. Um, our track needs to be redone as well. So um, we'll also look at possibly um, the field behind Blake, which uh, many of our sports teams use for a practice facility. Um, that becomes almost unusable during the rainy season, and uh, so perhaps we might be able to have a really nice complex for the kids uh, in our school. So I'm um, looking forward to working with Michael and Athletic Director Eric Scott over the next few months for our field study, and um, hoping to make some good progress with that. So we're excited about that. Um, also, under this category, um, as you know, uh, Chromebooks are coming to Metro High School, and uh, we're excited for our seniors. Uh, our seniors are excited for themselves. Um, they have been, I've been hearing for a few years, and you know, when we first started one to one a few years ago, um, we kind of came out and said, well, in year two, we'll have our uh, freshmen and our sophomores, and that's when the current junior class picked up on that right away. You know, like where they started doing the math and they realized we were the gaps class. That wasn't going to get anything. So uh, we've worked really hard um, in, in making sure that uh, going into September next year will be one to one in grade nine which I'm excited about. Uh, our teachers who teach seniors have been working with that tech teacher over the past year in preparation for uh, teaching in a one-to-one -one environment, and uh, we're excited for um, for what that's going to look like um, and, and bringing those devices into uh, the school. Uh, so we are uh, in the process right now of reaching out to families, communicating with them. Um, we'll have some digital <coughs> citizenship uh, work for them to do as well, um, and we're just looking forward to 
um, seeing what those devices can bring to uh, our seniors next year. So uh, that's something that we're, uh, we're really excited about. So Robert, are you going to do the yeah. online, online courses like you did before? I don't think so. Um, Mr. Neil Sonnenberg, who's our, um, uh, he works with uh, technology in our school, uh, he and I felt we might not have gotten a lot of bang for a buck with that last time, so we might want to do more face-to-face -face stuff with students when we come back. And so um, there might be a couple components over the summer, but we think a lot of it's going to be more face-to-face. -face. Um, students found the loopholes around the, uh, the online stuff. We want to have those uh, direct conversations with them. Um, another piece uh, at, the, at the high school that we're really looking forward to, and, and I will tell you right now that in no way, shape, or form, and I am I an expert in what a library is and what a library should look like, I should say. Uh, but certainly, um, by the end of next year, I hope to be. Um, our library right now is 10 years old. If you've walked in our library, uh, you know it looks very traditional. And I'm not entirely certain that it meets the one-to-one -one need that our students have going forward. And we're looking at um, collaborative spaces. You know, that whole idea of you walk into a library and shh, you're quiet and you don't say anything. That's kind of gone by the wayside, where now it's uh, sort of a hum of student productivity and collaboration and creating uh, working spaces for our students so they can share resources and collaborate um, and work together. And uh, right now, we don't have a setup for that. Um, I visited a couple libraries this year, but um, along with our librarian and a couple staff members, we're going to kind of hit the road next fall and really look at some schools that um, have changed their library to meet sort of the needs of students right now. Um, and so that's one thing that I'm very excited about. I'm hoping that a year from now we um, have a pretty good sense of what we want to do uh, with that library. Uh, our library has been purging books over the past uh, six months or so in preparation for um, what a library with fewer books will look like. Obviously, we do more uh, with digital content these days, and um, we have books in our shelves that literally haven't been moved for six, seven, eight years. So we're identifying which of those books um, are no longer used by students um, with the hope of recreating some uh, or capturing some space that um, that we'll be able to better utilize. So uh, more to come on that one. I'm, I'm looking forward to at some point next year giving you an update on, on where we are with, uh, with, our, with, our, with our study. Um, moving on to uh, curriculum instruction and assessment. Um, always like to share the new classes that we're offering uh, for next year. Uh, as you know, we do a program of studies review each year where we look at the courses that we're offering, we look at trends and themes and, and certainly what students are taking online through VHS and tech and, and look at courses that we're offering that students just aren't signing up for anymore and um, I'm kind of replacing those. So uh, we've got a number of new courses next year. Uh, Mandarin 5 is a continuation of our Mandarin program. Uh, it's hard to believe that we're going to have students going into their fifth year of Mandarin now. Um, so that's really the last um, class of Mandarin will offer short of an AP course, which at some point down the road we may be looking at as well. Uh, but Mandarin 5 will be coming to the high school next year. Uh, stress management is a new course we're going to offer. Uh, Karen Reno and our wellness department is working on this curriculum right now. Um, this came from a lot of our surveys, the Metro West, Metro West Health Survey, um, just really trying to understand um, sort of needs of students. So she's been working um, on that curriculum. Uh, AP Economics and AP Art History are two new courses that have really come from data we received from uh, our online students, uh, very similar to AP Environmental Science, which we offered this year. We had about three or four years where we had close to 20 students sign up for AP Environmental Science. So we brought that into the high school and it's been successful. And Economics is a course that students are going to taking online here, and uh, uh, we're going to offer that. Actually, we are going to have run two full year section of that next year. So that became very popular with students. Um, a guitar is an exciting class. Uh, Doug Olson proposed, he and I have been talking about this one uh, for a while, and, and it's the, and I, sh I should have brought the wording of our, that we have in our program of studies, but it's really for people like me who don't know how to play an instrument and want to go and just sort of embrace and understand music and what an instrument can do. And uh, he's very excited, Margo Nothing was going to be working with him as well. Um, that obviously became very popular with students. And um, AP uh, Composition and Literature is another course. But one of the things that you'll notice in our new course offerings, and we've talked a lot about this at the leadership level of high school, is making sure that every new course offering isn't an honors or AP level course. We want to make sure that we're still providing um, other experiences for students. AP and honors level courses just aren't for everyone. Uh, 
Um, and sometimes we, we get excited with some of these uh, neat opportunities for students um, who want to um, experience an AP level class, but we have to remember that we need to make sure we're bringing them other courses as well uh, to, to ensure that we have a well-rounded program of studies for students. So uh, very happy with what we have um, put together for next year. And, uh, of course, signups have been um, uh, an indication that students are excited about them as well. Um, right under that, um, exams. So exams have been a big topic uh, here for a few years, and we spent a considerable amount of time this year in, in professional days and faculty meetings talking about sort of the purpose of exams. Um, you know, in, in my travels over the last few years and PTO meetings and games and you know my advisories. Uh, certainly the, the stress that students feel around exams comes up always around that you know end of January time where we're hitting the years and you know we're getting to exam uh, finals week for the next couple of weeks as well. Um, it's been about seven or eight years since the high school really had looked at exams and so um, we really kind of jumped in. I'm very proud of what the staff was able to do, uh, encouraged by the conversations that we had and we really talked about the purpose of exams and are we using that data to really drive our instruction. That was at the end of the day. Uh, the big point for us. And um, in some cases, we absolutely um, are and were and are, and in other cases, maybe not so much. Um, one of the things that I also did around the time we were working as a, um, on this as a staff, as I, amongst my job alike, about 15 high school principals, um, really just tried to get a good sense of what everyone else was thinking. And um, all but one school, literally, all but one school in the area is still offering exams, and the idea behind it is still the belief that they still offer value, they still provide good data. Um, though many colleges and universities are kind of backing off a little bit from exams, um, there's still no doubt that the value of an exam and the understanding how to study for an exam is beneficial for students going up to the next level. So um, we were all sort of believing that. And then when we looked at, um, sort of we, we actually put the exams up on the board and there was such a huge discrepancy between the number of exams our freshmen take compared to our seniors. And if the idea is we want to give these students this experience before they head off to college, um, then in theory our upperclassmen should be taking more than a freshman. And it was actually the opposite. Um, so we have ninth graders coming in who really don't have that experience of an exam schedule, walking into seven straight or seven final exams and seven major exams. So we're changing that for next year. Um, uh, English and social studies uh, will not be administering uh, uh, a mid-year exam and biology will not be administered in the final exam. Our students take the MCAT biology in June, so we felt jumping in a couple weeks later into a final exam seemed a little redundant, so we're gonna eliminate that piece as well. Um, we're also gonna add some more of our elected exams back into the senior schedule. So over the past couple of years, what had happened was in an effort to uh, sort of back off exams a little bit, we really went far to the left there. And our students were walking out of here with taking one and two exams for the entire year. Our seniors were. And so what we wanted to do was kind of recapture some of that time with them as well. So um, we're very curious to see how uh, the lack of, or the, the cut down a little bit in exams for our freshmen, um, how that impacts them. I'm, I'm really, uh, what we've determined as a faculty was we're gonna take the year to look at it. Um, my sense is that this is just the beginning and perhaps that um, there'll be fewer exams for sophomores as well. Um, Walpole High School actually is the only high school in the area right now that is eliminated exams completely. Um, but they're in year one of it, so we haven't, they haven't, they didn't have any data for us to really look at. Um, but everyone else is still. When you say exams, is this the, does that include midterm exams yeah. as well? Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah, so part of the, part of the problem with mid, with the exam for semester courses is when you give the exam, you don't have the student anymore to really use that data and drive the instruction. So what we ended up doing was eliminating those exams for those particular students. Um, what we want to do is replace them with more, more frequent, shorter assessments along the way. So for, I'll take uh, our English department, for example. So instead of giving um, a big mid-year exam and a big final exam, they're going to give a series of shorter exams throughout the year not give a, mid a big midterm, and actually that last exam will just be that last exam, that last period of assessment. So um, one of the interesting things that our, both our social studies teachers and a lot of our English teachers felt was going into a mid-year exam, they could almost predict how the students were going to do on the exam. And they felt, gosh, they lost a lot of um, classroom instructional time in preparing for the exam, 
administering the exam, and they were excited. They're excited to recapture that classroom time back. So, um, uh, so it was uh, it was something that you know we have talked about. Um, we've looked at um, in my you know four years now as principal. In the last couple of years, it really just started getting to a point where we really need to just take some professional time and really look at what we're doing with exam. Um, so it was good work. And like I said, adding some um, final exam, more final exam experience for our seniors who, like I said, some of this year were taking just two, um, I think is, is a move in the right direction for them as well. Robert, is yeah. that because they're taking AP exams and then they don't No, or? it's because most of our seniors take electives. Okay. And we sort of eliminate a lot of the exams from the elective schedule. So um, they were just exempt from the lecture. So um, they just weren't getting that experience anymore. So, so that's what we're going we're to add those back to. Um, so I will, uh, I will certainly report back to you um, on that you know, as, we, as we go on through the year. Um, I'm very curious to get the experience from the, fresh, from the uh, English and social studies teachers in terms of what their experience is like without administering the year exam. Um, like I said, my sense is, um, they're going to feel as though they still have all the information on the data they need. And uh, then we'll begin looking at what we want to do with software the ball game. Um, moving on to uh, student life. Um, as you know, you've, um, you've approved several trips for next year, which we're excited about. And one thing just stood out to me, um, I wasn't going to mention a whole lot about this today, but we had a faculty meeting today. And what we've been doing a lot with our faculty meeting is bringing students into present and we've done the faculty showcases we call them where teachers present. Um, but our students that went to France um, presented and uh, the question, the big question was what did I learn about myself on the trip? And then we have some of the most fascinating answers from the students and it made me realize um, even more so that's why we offer these international experiences for students. The students talk about the confidence they have now just to be away. Um, the courage it took for them to kind of go to another country and not quite have a handle on the language, but knew enough to have to get by and to make small purchases and stores. And they really just talked about coming back with a renewed sense of confidence and accomplishment for being able to go away for you know, eight or nine days. So that what did I learn about myself piece is really sort of is really home for me today. And um, I'm looking forward to our trip next April. We're sending students to China, uh, to Italy, to Spain. Now, Robert, is there yeah. ever, will there be an option, or maybe throwing it out there, because uh, most of these trips are for juniors and seniors, Correct. for the younger kids, just based on what you've said, because I used to work in educational travel, and they, you know, I've seen 10-year-olds go, I'm not saying we should do that as yeah. a community, but the younger they're exposed, uh, yeah. they, they just gain this earlier confidence, or in terms of, I went to France when my French was rubbish, but I went and I thought, oh, it, it got, I got, I got excited and I wanted to work harder. So I'm just wondering if that would ever be an option. I don't want this to turn into the haves and the have-nots, and every year there's a trip, sure. and that's stressful for parents too. Right. But in terms of more opportunities, maybe Montreal, maybe uh, you know. <coughs> Where? Yeah, it's nothing. We haven't talked about it, but it's yeah. not to say we wouldn't. I know. Uh, I didn't know first, if it was a rigid thing, junior, senior, only, boss, um, It kind of has been. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's not to say that we wouldn't yeah. like, look at that differently, but um, yeah. you know, I know when we started our China trip, our first trip we, we sent to China, we actually had eighth graders, eighth graders. on that trip. Awesome. Now that was the program was in a different yes, place. Yes, place yes. it was, you know, primarily a program for the middle school and just a couple of classes. Yeah, yes, school, yes, so yes. the population was that age. Um, <coughs> developmentally, it worked. Um, I have a seventh grader at home, and I can't even imagine <laughs> sending him to China. Uh, but it didn't work for our eighth graders that um, that went. So you know, to your point, you know, certainly um, Just more the opportunity is correct. Yeah, and opportunity for growth. Right. Within that, that you know, I get it. Yeah. Work for it. Yeah. Yeah. No, good point, and that's something certain, certainly we can you know, talk about with the uh, the world language department. Um, Metro West Health Survey, Matt just alluded to. Uh, we just got those results, so that's something that we're going to be looking through uh, in terms of the data. Uh, we'll be making, I assume, a presentation to the community at some point uh, that we share with faculty and students as well on some level. So um, we literally got the binders this week, so that'll be something that we'll be working through. Um, going to uh, professional development, um, one thing that uh, we 
we start to do more of, and again, it's, it's with our teachers growing from an um, instructional technology standpoint, is offering after school workshops for teachers. And they've gone over well, and, and Neil Sonnenberg has done a nice job of just offering an array of, of offerings to teachers after school. Um, what's been nice, you know, not talk a little bit about our health test students, they've been coming in to help out with that as well. Um, so that's been um, something that we'll continue to offer. Um, we always forget that um, learning to teach with this technology is, is obviously new for our teachers. It's something that um, they are accustomed to. And, and providing them with as much professional development as we can in those areas is important. And Neil has been fantastic in just offering many workshops for them um, after school from time to time. So we're going to continue those, um, those workshops. Um, moving on to school management and leadership. Um, one thing this summer I'm going to be working with a couple of local high school principals is uh, the possibility of creating um, study groups at each school that we can use to, uh, to share ideas and collaborate. So if you take the idea of what NEASC does, which they do a, a large, uh, uh, pretty significant site visit, the piece about the NEASC um, accreditation process that I find incredibly valuable is the self-assessment and the reflection that you do at the school. Um, then, you know, results in some standards. Um, my issue philosophically, and Jeff and I have talked a lot about this, is, is as we are right now, we are sort of held to standards that were given to us eight years ago. So one-to-one -one wasn't really known eight years ago. So I struggle with those standards knowing how much education has changed. So what I've talked to with a few high schools is, you know, identifying three or four folks from Medfield High School and a couple of local high schools will identify three or four teachers and create a team to go into each school and do an assessment and uh, report back. So I think that that type of feedback would be incredibly valuable. Um, schools that are very similar to us, I think, would be able to offer um, a lot in terms of what they see and perhaps what they're doing. And I think it'd be incredibly valuable for those teachers that are on those visits as well. So it's just something that we're brainstorming, we're looking at. Um, I've talked about three principles right now that seem to be on board. It's going to take a lot of work and coordination, but it's something that um, I'm hoping perhaps by the end of the school year um, we might be able to uh, be on the receiving end of the visit. I've already kind of volunteered for the first visit. I think uh, the key point that Rob brought up, and he and I have talked a lot about it, is the like schools and like districts. So when you go through me ask, um, folks come from all different places, but it may not be a, a community like Medfield with the same types of issues. So I think that uh, Robert's done a real nice job reaching out and trying to coordinate this so that when you look at communities that are around here that are having some of the same issues like stress and, and those types of things, how are they handling that? How are they doing with aligning the math curriculum uh, grades 8 through 12? Are they doing something with algebra? Are they not doing something? But having those important conversations with like districts and like schools extremely beneficial. So I, I really applaud uh, Robert for doing that and look forward to some of the data that comes back. So, um, and just in, in terms of um, our last theme, which is uh, uh, communication, community outreach, uh, we do offer as many copies and opportunities for parents to come in as we can. Um, and a lot of it is done through guidance. They do a terrific job of, of meeting with families and doing it grade by grade, preparing them for the following year. Um, Stephanie Worthley, who's our 6 through 12 uh, guidance coordinator, does a fantastic job of really lining these up for families. So, um, we're going to continue to offer those. Um, and technology workshops for parents. Uh, they were incredibly successful this year. Um, again, you know, our parents of our students have, you know, went to school in a, obviously a much very, very much, a very different uh, learning environment and providing them with those resources is important as well. So we were granted, I think, three Google workshops for parents. Um, they all sold out. Um, and we had our help desk students there, a couple of teachers, and uh, the community was uh, very appreciative of, of those as well. So we're going to continue running um, those types of uh, workshops and families as well. So um, again, I want to thank uh, our uh, site council for their work. Thank you, the school committee, for all your support. And um, are there any, are there any questions? I have a question about yes. Aspen. I'm not there yet, yes. but I've heard stuff. And I, I'm okay. wondering. <laughs> And, and so I wonder, how's it going? Because I think you have, there were bumps, like, like anything new yep. at the beginning. Yeah, um, a lot better. As, as Actually, when we were looking at site council, one of the students said they hated it, it was the worst. We hated it in September, and now they've kind of figured it out. Okay. Um, I think we all agreed, you know, at least administrators, the, the launch was, um, was a difficult one. 
Uh, we spent a lot of time preparing and transferring data and meeting with the Aspen reps. And the, the launch just didn't do as we thought it would. Um, Aaron access wasn't what we thought it would from the get-go. Um, we're getting there. Um, and, and the feedback I'm getting now from families is it's more than what they thought it would be. Um, but it was a rough, well, <laughs> no, rough September, rough August too. Uh, you're going to have a train. November, uh, October, November. <laughs> yeah. I think it was about December when <laughs> things started to, we started feeling good about it. And now, you know, everything is done electronically. Our report cards are done electronically. Parents go in to see the portal. Um, so, you know, we're not, I'm, I'm trying to think of what we're mailing home these days, and I can't think of anything. I think the last thing we mailed home was actually the password for Aspen. Um, ironically, we have mail at home. Um, everything is done electronically and Aspen's been, been pretty good at handling all of that. So. so there'll be a training for emailing. Yeah. <laughs> it's actually user friendly in the district I live in. Um, they use it and um, that was my frustration. I'm thinking, I, I know what it looks like. <laughs> <laughs> we can't get it there. And, uh, it just, it took a while. Um, but it's, it's in good shape now. Robert, I love yep. the collaboration with the other like schools about how to improve things. That's yeah. always um, that's always impressive, and it's super impressive that you just um, added exams into seniors and you didn't miss a beat. Mm -hmm. So that was super impressive that you're taking exams away. But I yep. do think that that is really important because as much as there might be some pushback from yep. the seniors, I imagine if I was a senior, I probably would not a lot. But it is true, that's the way things work, you know, when they get to college. So I think that that is... Well, one of the things that we did, we talked to the, our, especially this time of year, kids are back now. And you're always talking about, what, what was that freshman year like for you? Were you prepared? They always come back with um, a positive experience for the most part. Um, and I never get that, that testing question and they felt they were prepared, they knew how to do it, they knew how to study. Um, so there's still value on it. You know, to the degree that we were doing, especially with the freshmen, I don't think, I think we're overboard there. I, I agree with you. Every, um, every babysitter, anyone that we've had that has gone on to college, I always ask them, um, what they thought about their first year and every single kid whether they're going to an Ivy League school or Some other school every single kid has said that they felt so prepared um, for college when they left Midfield High So I think, I think it's like important. everything there has to be a balance right. You know and, and I think providing the students with those opportunities is important um, Completely eliminating it or completely going 100% of the direction I think is uh, maybe not the way to go it's great how Susan Cowell and the rest of the health team have come up with, you know, all those electives within the um, within the health program. I know my husband, who teaches at Needham, sat there at that incoming ninth grader and thought, "What? They do all this?" And he, you know, it's amazing. It's great. And I, I hope that will help address. There are kids that are stressed out, but then they leave happy because. Uh, Graduation yesterday, they were happy. You guys did a happy. great job. You know, so thank they were very you. Very happy. They were very happy. <laughs> 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 they're happy. 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 they all positive. Just, oh, and the great kids. I mean, even cleaning up at 4:30 this morning at yeah. all night grad. Kids, can I help you? Can I help you? Oh, thank you so much. I thought, holy moly, this yeah. is for you. You know, but great kids. Yeah. So they are. They are. We're lucky that they, you know, all the way K through 12. Yeah. yeah, we get good kids. So. We do. Robert, can I? Um, yep. On the library, yes. your library and transition you're talking about. I know you're just starting to look at it, but is that something we're going to be thinking about capital budget for? Or I would what? think so at some point, yeah. 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 Um, my yes. hope next year is to kind of really have that figured out, and then you know, it would definitely be something that we'd look at. Um, that would take significant work in there. I don't Without holding your number, you're talking like on the order of 50000 or 500000 <laughs> Yeah, I don't, I don't believe we're going to do anything structurally to the okay. room itself. Um, I think it's a, a lot of... Uh, furniture that we don't have, yeah. Yeah. Um, and 
repositioning things and you know I'm thinking the circulation desk where it is now is probably worked well a number of years ago but um, I know that, that is like the center yeah. of the actual room mm -hmm. you know and so something along those lines uh, so and I mean I know I know it's been seven years since the ask was here yeah. we there here at, I guess two years ago for the five years check-in but correct um, my my memory library seems to be a hot button issue for or for a long time it was a hot yeah. button for me have they sort of evolved to a point where they'll Except this kind of evolve. Well, I know. I mean, I hate to have you go through all this and have them, even though well, we're confident about it. Yeah, have me I, mean, say, I think your accreditation there are some there are some standards that I struggle with. I really do. Um, standards that made a lot of sense seven eight years ago. Um, so you, the word evolve is, is one that you know we'll probably stay away from for now. But you know, as we've talked about, I think that we have a pretty good sense of. of, of what's best for this learning community and, and my communication to them has always been that the local community should always have a lot of say in the type of learning environment they want to create for the students. Um, so, and that's not to say we're going to completely disregard their standards of their recommendation because some of them are very good. Um, but there are other things that are important to us here and I don't want to risk lowering the bar to some degree here for the sake of implementing a recommendation that was good a number of years ago. So and the DS has gotten a lot of pushback from communities. I mean, they, uh, you know, as Robert alluded to, in terms of evolving, uh, they need to change their standards. And what we're doing as a school district that's mandated from the state and federal government has raised the bar dramatically. And the DS needs to catch up with that a little bit. So I think they've they've tried to do that. They've heard they went on a listening tour last year, and they've got a lot of feedback from all of us. And they're going to make some changes. So hopefully by the time they they come back. So I'm going to, um, I met with them a couple of weeks ago just to give you an update on that since I'm here. Um, uh, they, we took a pass on some of their recommendations during their last, um, the last reporting period. And, you know, as a community, a learning community, we decided that those just weren't meeting our needs. Um, so when I met with them, we met with them a couple of weeks ago, um, uh, we agreed to sort of update sort of our progress in terms of how, their big piece is how we're assessing students. So um, we shared with them what we're doing, they're very happy with what we're doing. So we're gonna document some of that stuff, so that them in October, um, and then we'll determine whether or not we're gonna go forward with the next steps, which would be the, uh, then, ready for the accreditation. I hear from so many parents that there is an increasing reliance on tutors. Do you have any sort of data about how many of our students are getting tutors or going to I don't. Um, I don't know that we have that because I assume so many do it on their own without even letting us know. Um, probably something we do for a survey. Is if we want to look at that in the survey. Uh, it is in there. It is, yeah. And, yeah. and the, the numbers um, lower than we had thought. Really? Yeah. yeah. The and interesting the thing, though, is as you know, the SAT has changed. Um, and the SAT changed philosophically because they felt that they had created an assessment that students could be coached to take. Um, so the new SAT really um, de-emphasizes the, the rote and the memory. Um, they were obviously seeing a very <coughs> big, uh, what they felt was a, a big difference in scores between um, students who had access to tutors and students who didn't. Um, so the new SAT, which has created the new PSAT, which is something that um, our juniors are going to be dealing with, our sophomores as well, um, is really designed to focus on different types of skills. And the emphasis and the, um, the college board's hope is that the um, reliance on a tutor um, isn't going to be what it was before. So that's all new, so we'll see how that impacts us. Uh, but we don't have, we don't have data, because like I said, a lot of students uh, don't do it on their own. Uh, but it's, it's probably something we can do. And then on the, this was a first a first year already you've got in the, in the report, but the first year of the new life skills classroom, can you talk about yeah, how that's yeah, worked and fantastic. how your vision is for next year? Yep, so we have uh, three students right now who are in our life skills program, um, two of them from Medfield, one. Um, actually, we have four. One of my eighth graders is transition, but transition over about halfway through. Um, it's been fantastic for them. We have a star who's teaching that course. Uh, she is unbelievable. 
Um, and uh, it's gone as well as we thought it would. Um, the students and, you know, they have an opportunity to take some elective classes with the general population, which has been fantastic um, during the lunchroom with our kids. Um, just the little feedback I've had from the family, they're very appreciative and, and uh, excited for the program itself. Um, and I don't know the exact numbers for next year in terms of what might be coming uh, from out of district, uh, but I know we'll have a good for the program next year and possibly more. The capacity is 10, is that is it 10? I think it was 8. Is eight. eight. Yeah. Okay. Right. So we're looking at bringing students from out of district in as well. Tuition? Is that tuition, tuition or swap with other tuition. 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 tuition? So it's going well. It's going very well. Great. Last thing I want to say is. Um, First of all, we went to church yesterday, which is why it was so sunny. <laughs> but I think it was uh, <laughs> today. I think you should have given that wear sunscreen speech. I know. I'll give you the date for the next graduation. Make sure you put that on your calendar as well for that Sunday morning. I, I just wanted to say I, I really appreciate being able to be a part of it. It was so, you know, such an honor to be a part of it. Such a joyous occasion for such great kids. Thank you. Thank Thanks you. for being part of it. it was, uh, it's always a fantastic event. It's, you, know, you pray for good weather, and, and you get that, and so that just kind of takes off. And the kids. The kids make the event. I mean, their speeches were unbelievable. The national anthem we were talking about. The national anthem was incredible. Before, um, <laughs> that young lady is uh, Julia Clifford, is one of the Syracuse University uh, study music. Um, and she was, uh, she was something else. I'm sure she warmed up but, you know, back you know, in high school, but when you're on the field and you're there for 45 minutes or so and they just walk in and she just felt it out, like, you feel like she just kind of walked up and did it without any kind of warm up. I'm sure that's not what happened, but. Uh, yeah, that was, that was, that was quite, a, quite a rendition. So. She, she's very talented. Great. Thank you. Thanks, Robert. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. So we need to vote to um, accept both improvement plans. The motion to approve the, to accept and approve the Blake Middle School Improvement Plan. So moved. For a second. All in favor? Aye. Opposed? That's unanimous. Is there a motion to approve the May Medfield High School School Improvement Plan? So moved. Is there a second? Second. All in favor? Aye. Opposed? Can we plug in for a sports team? Sure. sure. Big day today. Uh, baseball won, so they're going to the sectional semifinals, which is the first time in a while we've gone that far. So I think they're playing Thursday. Um, I didn't get any test results, but my phone's been buzzing, so it yeah. might be. It might, be, it might have gotten that. Uh, and boys and girls across are playing here Wednesday night. Double header. Double header. Uh, five and seven. And uh, so they're both number one seats, so hopefully they'll keep that going too. So we'll playoff run alive. Thank you. Thanks.